Welcome. Very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Broom. This is the CBC Evening News. In our top story tonight, medical tourism could be the way forward for Barbados. That's according to Prime Minister Fundal Stewart, who believes there's some additional foreign exchange earning potential in the area. He made the comment while delivering the feature address at the start of the 2015 International Business Week conference at the Hilton Barbados. For a long time now, the government of Barbados, in particular the ministries of health and tourism, have been proponents of medical tourism, which we consider to be a lucrative industry that possesses several advantages for our international business sector. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister also says another area ripe for investment is biotechnology, which is a rapidly growing global industry. Presently in Barbados, we have a unique international business company by the name of LensTech Inc., a global manufacturer of intraocular lenses for cataract and refractive surgery. In 1995, this U.S.-owned company opened its first manufacturing facility here. Now a 30,000 square foot plant, the company employs approximately 200 persons, several of whom were trained right here at the University of the West Indies, graduating with degrees in science and other disciplines. Education Minister Ronald Jones says officials will be working with stakeholders to determine what is appropriate attire for people visiting schools. His comments come following public discussion over the past few weeks about how some parents are dressed when they turn up to schools. Lisa Lord reports. Schools are places of business and people must come dressed to conduct business when they visit these institutions. This is according to Education Minister Ronald Jones while speaking to the media during a tour of the New Horizons Academy at its official opening this morning. Mr. Jones says when parents are inappropriately dressed, they only place pressure on their children. But if you come with the shortest shorts, that your, 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 your chest is, is exposed and falling out, that from the top of your neck to the, to, the, to the top of your buttocks is revealed. If that's in a primary school, if that is in a secondary school, the students' peers will have a perspective on that that in most times, if not all times, will be negative. Look how you mother turn up here. That places pressure on that child. And it's by, it's by acts like that, that then if that person feels pressured, some people use the word even bullied, but pressured, there might be a given reaction. He says it also shows a lack of respect for the school. You are not going to go into the courts of Barbados unless you are appropriately dressed. I can't go in the courts of Barbados with a shirt tail. I have to go in in a shirt jack suit, I have to go in in a suit, I have to go in appropriately and demurely dressed. The school system must demand the same. Do not come off the streets as though you've just come from a place of ill repute, as though you, you care nothing about the standards of the school, as though you have no respect or regard for your children there. No. Another issue the education minister pointed out was the way some people visiting schools just walk onto the school compound. He says procedures are in place to follow. Not to barge through the gate, head to a classroom. Classrooms are off limits. And the point of first point of contact is with the security of the there or with the office of the principal. Then that principal can say, well, okay, call the teacher or once or if it is a matter that isn't controversial, it might be even to return a book. Or to say, well, my child left this book at home. As simple as that. Okay, um, go down the corner and turn left, and you see door 2A there. And so proceed. When they're exiting, the security guard should note the time that they're exiting as well. 
The New Horizons Academy, which was opened last year, caters to children with learning and behavioral difficulties. Minister Jones says children must be given the opportunity for their voices to be heard. Acting Director of the Academy, Colleen Jilks Collimore, says they work closely with the parents to ensure that the children get all the attention they require. Well, the Student Services Department from the Ministry of Education, we work very, very closely together. We work with the parents where we have, like the parent mentioned on this slide, there's partnership Saturdays. The social worker from here also do home visits. So the parents have to, be, have, to have an integral part in the program. There's no two ways about it. They sign a contract with the student when they come here that they are indeed going to be part and part of the process. The academy caters to children in primary and secondary schools. The shortest stay is one term and students are not integrated back into the mainstream school system until officials believe they are ready to do so. Lisa Lord, CBC News. Thanks, Lisa. Well, the acting chief education officer, Karen Best, says the ministry had to defend the construction of the New Horizons Academy. She says in less than a year, the institution has already seen results with some students. I saw a parent that I know very well. And she came to me and she said, Mrs. Best, your boy Adam has gone back to school. I remembered Adam, but what I did not know that Adam came here at New Horizons. And Adam now has gone back to his school and is fitting in. And that is the difference of New Horizons Academy. Children can help their parents make good food choices by including eggs in their diet. And on World Egg Day, Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Agricultural Society, James Paul, is encouraging parents to incorporate eggs into various meals for their children. Today, Mr. Paul and his team visited Lawrence T. Gay, West Terrace and the Bay Primary Schools, handing over 360 cases of a dozen eggs to each school donated by Chickmont. There has no added, um, there's nothing added to it. It's very pure. Um, it's as close to organic as you can want to get it, anyhow. And in terms of the number of vitamins that you can have, there are a whole range of vitamins in the egg in itself that basically that you will not find in another meal. As a matter of fact, it is known that the egg in itself is a complete meal. And as we made it quite on the stage there with the children, it is the cheapest form of protein that you have available. And when we are concerned today about nutrition and people eating healthy, it's very important to get these messages over to people. And principal of Bay Primary, Marilyn Gamble, says the method of using the eggy mascot to teach children is very effective. We need every day to remind them of these little things. They do take home the messages to their parents and little things like these, especially done in the manner in which it was done with the mascot, it helps to sort of keep those things in their memories more than just a normal stand-up lecture type lesson. So I'm sure that they're going to go home now bubbling with all the information that they want to pass on to mummies and daddies and their older siblings. Hoteliers have been proactive in the fight against sargassum seaweed and in some cases have been footing the bill to help clear beaches. Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Sue Springer, says sometimes extra staff and equipment were brought in. She says some even moved guests to other beaches. There was also a cost where some hoteliers um, sent their guests to the West Coast so that they could have a good beach experience and transported them and provided for food while they were on, the, on another beach. So our hoteliers were certainly footing a lot of the bills for it. Barbadian songstress Rihanna has announced her new album, Auntie. She revealed the title and cover artwork at Los Angeles' Mama Gallery. The Auntie cover art depicts the image of a young Rihanna holding a black balloon in her left hand while a gold crown covers her eyes. The white and red canvas is layered beneath the braille lettering of a poem titled If They Let Us, written by Chloe Mitchell. After its unveiling, Rihanna said, sometimes the ones who have sight are the blindest.
We will have more news ahead, but first, we want to get your take on this question. Should a dress code be put in place for adults entering schools? Text yes or no to short code 8111. We'll have the results for you at the end of the news. Hi, this is Nicholas Branker, inviting you to join me on a musical journey at City Nights Influences. At City Nights, you'll groove to Bob Marley, Miles Davis, Roberta Flack, and many others, all interpreted by Nicholas Branker, as well as his own hits. Also on stage will be Bajan stars Edwin Yearwood, Biggie Irie, Alison Norville Ford, and more. Showtime, 8 p.m. at the Frank Collimer Hall, October 10th and 11th. Tickets at $80 at TicketPal.com or any TicketPal outlet. See you all at City Nights Influences at the Frank Collimer Hall. Here comes a very special time of the year. You're dreaming of the colors that will be everywhere. Harris is your first choice. Call it Christmas. Make Harris Bates your first choice this Christmas for a whole lot less. There's 20% off perma, 25% off kitchen and bathroom, and 30% off all Ultima Plus paints, plus the ever durable Travel Tax Natural for just $98. So dream in color this Christmas with Harris Bates, the Caribbean champions of color. Harris is your first choice. Call it Christmas. Your week just got better. It's season two of the Tony Thorne Show. With new faces. All the way from Vinci. What's up, it's a girl, Nikita. Yeah, this is Peter Ram. This is Marvin. Yo, this is King Baba. I get to all the ones in Tony Thorne Show. New experiences. And new topics right here on CBC TV 8. So tune in. A St. Michael woman held attempting to smuggle drugs into the island from Guyana has been granted $80,000 bail. Denisa Chantel Foster, 23 years, of number 2A North Close Wildey, was arrested at the Grantley Adams International Airport on Wednesday. Foster, a Barbadian, had earlier arrived on a Caribbean Airlines flight from Georgetown. She was referred to customs by drug squad personnel where three transparent taped packages containing three kilos of cocaine with a street value of $150,000 was found hidden in a false compartment of her suitcase. She appeared before the magistrate in the District A Magistrate's Court where she pleaded not guilty to the offences. Her bail conditions include surrendering her passport and reporting to Central Police Station every Monday before 10 in the morning. Well, there's a warning from the principal of the UEK Phil campus to the Barbados Accreditation Council regarding some foreign tertiary education providers. Professor Eudine Barato is concerned some of them could slip through the cracks if local officials are not vigilant with the increasing competition in the area of higher education in Barbados and the region. She raised the issue as part of the Elsie Payne Memorial Lecture hosted at Queen's College School Hall titled Creating Leaders Through Excellence in Our Educational System, Transforming UE Education. While the Barbados Accreditation Council is ensuring local institutions become accredited, it must ensure vigilance with unknown providers. There can be a general free-for-all among mostly unregulated foreign providers. Recently in a Caribbean country, there was an educa a foreign education provider that left persons stranded in that country without money, without the course of study that they had paid for. During the lecture, Professor Barreto also announced the CAFIL campus's plans for Barbados's 50th anniversary of independence next year. The CAFIL campus has established a special committee to commemorate Barbados's 50th anniversary as an independent country under the chairmanship of one of your own outstanding alumna, former campus registrar Jacqueline Wade. The committee has a special remit to look at the UWI's contribution over the past 50 years and to plan activities to commemorate it. It came as a surprise for Class 3 students of Welch's Primary in St. Thomas, the latest recipients of tablets from the Aaron and Christina Trust Foundation. 24 of them were presented with new Samsung tablets. Principal Patricia Lovell says the donation comes not only during Education Month, but as calls are being made for classrooms to be brought into the 21st century. 
we are told, let them use the gadgets that they use in their everyday existence instead of having an artificial setting in the classroom. Today, a quantum leap has been made to bridge the gap between these two worlds. An avenue has been created for you students to be on par with your peers. This will, will enable you not only to imagine, but explore and create. Aaron Truss of the Aaron and Christina Truss Foundation says through the project, over 600 Class 3 students will receive tablets. We've chosen students in Class 3 because we feel you're old enough uh, to handle the responsibility of taking care of the tablet. And we'll also have it to help you prepare for the common entrance exam, which you all have to do in two years. So use it for your studies. We hope it will improve your results uh, in the common entrance. But as your principal and I have said, it's important for whatever you want to do in the future. And MP for St. James Central, Carrie Simmons, told the youngsters that information technology is part of Barbados' development and will be part of their future. However you look at Barbados' development, whether it is our sporting development, whether it's the actual physical development, like the structures being built and roads and so on, whatever you think of doing in your future, you're going to rely, as Mr. Trust just said, we do it in law, you have to rely in the future on being able to access, manipulate, and use the tools for information technology. Barbados's Junior Minister of Tourism, Chloe Walker, is leaving the island later this month to take part in the Caribbean Tourism Organization's Regional Tourism Youth Congress 2015. The Youth Congress, which is a featured event at the CTO's State of the Industry Conference, will take place in Curacao from October 21st to 23rd. It will be held under the theme Caribbean Tourism, Growth Through Innovation. The 17-year-old Harrison College student will compete with other junior tourism ministers from across the region to become the next Caribbean junior minister. A lightning strike has damaged one of the multi-choice television satellite dishes. Other equipment was also damaged. As a result, a and &E, USA, MSNBC, TV Land, Disney, and AMC channels are currently off air. The engineering team is working to restore all affected channels as soon as possible. MCTV apologizes for any inconvenience caused and thanks its valued customers for their patience and understanding. Well, still to come, a look at some of the stories making headlines across the region. First, we want to hear from you on this question. Should a dress code be put in place for adults entering schools? Text yes or no to short code 8111. 